Welcome back to Diecast Resurrection. Today is Hot Heap Day. Fam, we got the whole heap squad lined up here and we are going to pick one to experiment on today. These are all Hong Kong cars, 100%. I don't have any US ones here. Red and green are the most common. Blue, which looks like it stands out to me, uh, is also fairly common. And then on the end, aqua is considered uncommon. So... What we are going to do today, we're going to pick one of these. I'll just take one of these red ones. This one specifically, because it's already been drilled. I'm going to put all these to the side. The plan today was to get one of these back on the road. Now, it's not going to be 100% stock. Not 100% stock, because uh, obviously one thing that you've probably noticed, all of those cars were missing windshields. It seems like every time I go try to get one of these windshields at the old Redline shop, that they are sold out. So today I wanted to see if I could... Uh, make my own or modify one to fit on here. If I could get this little motor out, that'd be great. Just gonna give this a little push right here. There we go. As you can probably tell, I'm feeling a lot better. Thank you guys for all your uh, kind words of encouragement. All right, so here's the dealio. Um, we need a windshield and I was digging through my junk pile and I found this. It kind of looks like a hot heap windshield, right? It's almost a perfect match, except it's a little bit too tall, which is okay for now. Where did this come from? Well, if you guys remember the party wagon video I did, which was after that drunken live stream that we 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 dare not mention. Jimmy, what happened last night? Jimmy. We built... One of these little paddy wagons, except we had an original one. What we have here is the 25th anniversary. So these were released in 1993. And we took one of these apart to see if I could get this, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, the little buggy cover here to fit onto an original Redline paddy wagon, which we did. So I'm going to see if I can get this glass on one of these hot heaps today and get one of these back on the road. You feel me? If you'll notice these wheels, that's what we put on uh, the most recent video, the King Radio Van. So that's one car resurrected. We took the top for a original Redline paddy wagon, so that's two cars resurrected. And then, if we can get this windshield on this hot heap, that'll be three cars resurrected for the price of one of these. And I think we paid about $3 each for them. Obviously having a repo red line is better than having no red line, but since we got some originals here that we can fix up, we're going to try to do it. So I, I do think the width is accurate on this. It's just the height that is off. So let's try to put this in. In this red car. Should be as simple as just clicking in this seat. Just like so. We got a secure hot heap glass. That is a little bit too tall. Hell yeah, good enough for me, man. We're going to paint this. Or should we try cutting it? Maybe we'll, maybe we'll cut it, you know? Let's cut it. We'll make it short like it's supposed to be. It's actually pretty interesting, you know, like the... Between the Hong Kong car and a US car, it looks like the Hong Kong windshield, the blue one there, is a little bit shorter even, so... If I could get something in that, in that range, I think I'll be happy. Give this a little clean up here. I'm gonna put a little water on here. Ah, I guarantee you a little bit of DNA in every resurrection. Just ask Peter Wood with the party wagon. <laughs> All right, so there's a little windshield. I might give this a little polish before we finish the car, but our edge looks nice. Looks pretty factory, honestly. Let's, uh, let's do a little test fit here, shall we? Oh, baby. It's like it was made for it. So now the only thing that isn't completely accurate about this is that this should be standing up a little bit straighter. 
the angle of the windshield is kind of built into the support that's kind of in the tub here so that's going to be our only compromise that we're going to have to make using this paddy wagon windshield but that is definitely good enough for our purposes today if you know what i'm saying so we're going to go ahead and move on to uh the next step which is oh god don't break it we just built the damn thing so we're going to put this in the very capable hands of big jimmy and he's going to hold on to this until we are at that point Thank you, Big Jimmy, for looking out for that. You can go back to your RV, and we can go ahead and strip this. This is the one we want to use, right? There is no conceivable damage. The paint isn't even too bad on this, except for every single edge. So, yeah, we're going to be stripping this anyways. So, let's, let's go ahead and do that. This should take about two seconds with this paint stripper. Every single video I get comments about this paint stripper. The reason I want to stop using it is because it is pretty cancerous stuff. My little room here is ventilated, but it's not as good as it could be. So I was looking for alternatives that wouldn't kill me as fast. Maybe in the future. But yeah, this stuff works really good, especially on these red lines because it is just one little coat of paint on them. No primers or nothing like that. And it just comes off as quick as you put it on, pretty much. Get the little hiney. So I'm going to go give this a rinse with some hot soapy water and a little brass brush. Get this nice and clean and we can start polishing this baby up. High five. Okay, we're all cleaned up here. We got a couple little little age freckles. Not too bad though. This thing's actually a really nice shape. It's got that brushed kind of look. But this is a really nice example of what the zinc should look like before you do a factory paint job. And I just noticed that this is wrecked. The back of this tub is smashed. Huh. Well, damn. We're going to have to, I don't know what we're going to do with that. I mean, that's, might be able to hammer that out. Sorry, my mind, I just, I see details when I'm not even looking at things. Anyways, so yeah, let's go ahead and polish this bad boy up and try to make it, go that extra mile and make it, make it real flashy. Definitely happy to be doing one of these. Finally, it's almost been a year since I purchased them. Channel's one year anniversary will be coming up, uh, middle of october so a couple couple more weeks here it's definitely been a good time so far and it's only going to get better from here i'm still a newbie as far as youtubers go most youtubers you know it might take them three years to get to eighty thousand subs so this this all happened really quick i'm just trying to do my best to kind of keep pace I'm going to switch this out for a new one. Once they get this, this worn out, they don't really get into the edges as good. So I usually pitch them when they get to about here. Unless you're, unless you're polishing up like a Volkswagen Beetle or something, then that'd be just perfect for that. All these little folds though, that's what really gets into those edges because it just kind of splits. You know what I'm saying? All right, you can see now why they call it antifreeze green. So anyways, we're going to mix up some clear coat here. This is just automotive 2K urethane. I'm not sure how many coats it's going to take to get the color. Hopefully about, I'm hoping about four. And we're going to find out in a minute what this looks like.
Hell yes, that worked perfectly. Look at that. There is no disputing that this is the best method of painting with the Redline Shop paint. Thinning it out and do plenty of coats. I think I got about six coats on this bad boy. Beautiful. I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to let my room clear out here of these fumes. I'm looking forward to finishing this. Pimp! There we go. It's a nice factory looking shiny base. I'm going to add a little bit of black there to our rad. Get that all touched up. Suppose we could put our axles back in at this point. Beauty. We'll go ahead and get this back one in. Same idea. Get some fresh blades on. Pimp. It's almost time to do an assembly here, I think. We got that done. Interior's clean. Okay, all these little parts are good. Those are glass. From old Big Jimmy here. I think our glass is looking pretty legit, I'd say. Definitely doesn't look like a cut windshield to me. Cool, let me grab the body then. Pretty happy with this windshield even though it's not 100% accurate. We've got so many of these hot heaps laying around, I'm glad we are able to at least get one up. For now. We'll get this on here. This thing looks wicked. Just gonna touch up that grill a little bit. I'm very pleased with the way that this antifreeze turned out. Let's see if I can find some footage of the last time I did antifreeze using the directions that they recommend. Which is uh, six parts paint to one part hardener. Just turns out like garbage. Bare Metal, I think, has even mentioned in his videos that he's had trouble painting uh, this antifreeze in the past. So I wasn't surprised in my video the first time when I saw my results. But it was nothing like this. These results are crazy compared to what I had before. So anyways. Dude, this thing is cool. That turned out really good. I love it. The color is perfect. It's just... It's just what I envisioned. So heck yeah, man, that's, uh, that's the way to paint the Spectra Flame. You gotta reduce it. Mixing it with that clear coat is uh, the way to do it, and I'm gonna continue doing it. You'll use less paint. You get more coats on your car, you just get better results overall, so. Hell, good enough for me, man. Put her on the shelf. I think she looks sweet. Bloop, 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 bloop. I love it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm not sure what's coming up next, but I will see you in the next one. Boom, 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 boom.